All right, in this video, I want to show you how to legally cheat so you can understand reflections. And we're going to be reflecting points, lines, polygons, and all these kind of things. And a lot of times it gets kind of confusing if we're just going to try to remember the rules of reflections based on a coordinate point. Now, it can be confusing just dealing with x and y's. And that's why I tell my students to cheat. Take out a sheet of paper you, when you're taking a test or a quiz, maybe just even do it on your test and quiz, and use lines of reflection to understand where exactly your points um, are and what is being applied. How is the reflection about certain lines of symmetry impacting those coordinate points x and y? Because if you're going to rely on your memory to remember what is negative, what is you know, positive, what gets flipped and what doesn't, you're more likely going to get confused. So, Let's go and take a look at some lines of symmetry that we can reflect about. And one of the most common lines of symmetry we can reflect about is the y-axis, right? So this y-axis, when we're reflecting about the line of symmetry, a lot of times I just like to talk about this as a flip, right? You're basically going to take this and kind of like a book, you're going to flip it about the y-axis. You can think of this as like the binder of the book, and you're just opening a page and flipping over here. So if you think about it, we can guess our point's going to be somewhere over there, right? Now, if we think about this, if you were to really just flip this point, you would recognize that the y coordinate, right, this vertical distance away from the origin, is not going to change. The only thing that's changing is the x. And if the x was going from a positive to now going to a negative, hopefully it kind of makes sense that it's, that it's going to be negated. Now, what I like to do is take a sheet of paper and actually use this as a line of symmetry. So I'm actually going to take this y axis and I'm going to fold it across, just like a book, like I told you. And hopefully you guys can see that now, yeah, that vertical distance remains at 2. And the horizontal distance is 3. But since it's to the left, it's being negated. So technically, this point would be negative 3, positive 2. right? As you reflect it over, it'd be negative 3. So when I reflect about the y-axis, that's going to be a negative x pi y. So we say reflect the y-axis is just going to be negating the x-coordinate. Now, what about the x-axis? So here's the x-axis. And again, we can reflect about the x-axis here as well. Because if we reflect about the x-axis, what that's going to be doing is, again, kind of doing the same thing like we did here. You're now going to be flipping this over, right? But trying to like, remember the rule or trying to you know, know what it's going to look like, what we can simply do is, again, just take this and fold it across this line. And I tell students on their test all day long, when you're taking your test, like, Take out a sheet of paper, fold it, right? Legally cheat. There's no, nothing wrong with you being able to take this point and fold it over a line of symmetry. And now you can see that the graph, the point is still 3 over, but now it's just being, instead of up 2, it's now down 2. So what's happening? Well, this point is being negated, right? The y coordinate is being negated down here. So this point is being x, comma, negative y. So if I want to reflect the x axis, and again, this is for any point. All you're simply going to do is negate the y. It doesn't have to be in the first quadrant. It can be in any quadrant. But that's going to be the rule that you're going to follow. Now, typically, the x and y axis, they kind of get a little like, OK, I got those. Those aren't you know, too crazy. But what about, what about some other lines of symmetry that we can do? Well, some other lines of symmetry we can do is would be like the one of our more famous ones, the y equals x line. Now, the y equals x line is basically for every value of x is going to equal y, right? And so on this one, it's going to be a little bit trickier, but we're going to try to do a diagonal as best as possible, right? So we're going to try to cut this off, cut this 90 degrees as best as possible here. This one's not always going to be as pretty as my other ones, but I'll try to do the best I can, OK? And not too bad. And if you can kind of see. What I'll do is, OK. And actually, what I'll do is, let me fix this here. All right? Now, I want you to pay attention with this. Because if I reflect this point, OK, when I reflect about the y equals x line, notice which quadrant that this line is still in. Right? It's still in the first quadrant. I can't negate the x or the y. Right? When I reflect about this y equals x line, none of my, it's still in the first quadrant. So when you're going to do a reflection about the y equals x line, again, like, think about it. Like, if you're going to reflect about this line, it's just going to be right there. Right? So what's happening then? How is it like being moved? How are we reflecting this but without actually negating like the x and the y axis? 
Well, the only thing that's happening here is we are just reflecting about, we're just reflecting the y and the x coordinate. I'm sorry, you're just swapping the x and the y coordinate. That's all that's happening, is the points are going to be swapped. So when we want to reflect the y equals x equals x line, all we're simply going to do is swap the x and the y. Now, what about the y equals negative x line? Well, that's going to be a line down here. So that's going to be a negative slope. So how are we going to do this? Well, again, think about it. Like, think about what's happening here. If you do the exact same thing again, but now in this case, so you fold your paper and you say, OK, now I'll reflect about the y equals x line. So you have this point, right? Again, it's over 3, up 2, right? And as, a re as I reflect now, doo -doo -doo -doo, it's kind of uh, as I reflect about this line, seems like it's a little bit easier over here, you can see that my point is now 2 over and down 3, OK? So again, my x and my y coordinates are again swapping, but also I'm going from the first quadrant to the fourth quadrant, right? Because if you take this point and you reflect it, it's going to be somewhere down here. If I was going to like estimate, right? If I was just going to take a random guess, I would estimate it to be right around there. And again, you can see that it's not going to be the same distance away and vertical distance away, but it's going to be that swapped version. So my x and y coordinates are going to swap. So if I do reflect the y equals negative x, not only, oops, that's a corner. Not only am I going to swap the coordinates, but I'm also going to negate them. And why does negating make sense? Because I'm going from the first quadrant, which everything was both positive, now to the second quadrant, or third quadrant, I'm sorry, where both terms are going to be negative. And the last line that I want, or the last symmetry that we want to talk about is the origin. And so if you're symmetrical about the origin, that's basically being symmetrical about the x and the y axis. So that's basically taking my graph, reflecting it about the y axis, right? So then my 3 becomes negative, my y, or my, um, 3 is negative, my y is positive, and then I just reflect it one more time. And you can see now, it's still going to be 3 over, but now it's going to be negative 2. So when we have that, that is just going to negate my x and my y. So the last symmetry that we need to do is going to be reflect the origin, which right here, which is just going to be negate my x and negate my y. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you legally cheat. You can memorize all of these formulas if you want to. But my best piece of advice that I can, because I get them tripped up as well, is grab a sheet of paper. If you're taking a test, use your scratch piece of paper. Or use your test. And then create your lines of symmetry as your folds. And fold the paper over. And use some easy numbers that it's easy to identify what's going to be turning positive and what's going to be turning negative. It's going to make your life a lot easier than trying to memorize all of these rules, especially with the x and the y and the coordinates and get them all swapped. So hopefully that was helpful for you. And again, I have some more example videos for you to go ahead and try on your own. And hopefully you can find those helpful. All right, cheers.